Hello, welcome to this uh, mini Bible series that we are doing for the week. Today, um, Thursday, August the 13th, and we prepare for this coming Sunday, August the 16th, 2020, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. And today we take a look at the gospel reading for Sunday, Matthew chapter 15, and I will cover the verses 10 through 28, although there are some options given to us on splitting those two up. I'll read for you the whole thing, but I want to focus on just verses 10 through 20. Jesus teaches his disciples that true purity is a matter of the heart rather than outward religious observance. Almost immediately, this teaching is tested when a woman considered to be a religious outsider approaches him for help. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached him and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, Explain this parable to us. Then he said, Are you also still without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart comes evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person, but to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Well, there are two distinct messages in today's gospel, as I said earlier, and to really try to cover them both would be to do a disservice to both of them. So my reflections for today will be on the first section, verses 10 through 20 and even a little prelude, I guess, to what's happening before we get to this section where Jesus is teaching. Prior to this, in verses 1 through 9, Jesus is engaged in a controversy with Pharisees and scribes regarding the observance of the law. Matthew tells us that these Pharisees and scribes came from Jerusalem all the way to Galilee, which would be out of the ordinary. So there had to be some serious motivation for them to make that trip. And the average Galilean would have been dazzled by their authority. Well, the Pharisees are here. The scribes are here. Whoa. Jesus was not. <laughs> the Pharisees and the scribes came to see Jesus it would tell us at verse 1. And this is a tribute to his growing reputation. He was known about all the way down into Jerusalem. 
It's also a tribute to their growing discomfort with Jesus. In the verses 1 through 9, they criticize Jesus for not correcting his disciples when they failed to observe a ritual cleansing, that is, washing their hands according to a prescribed ritual. Jesus countered by noting their failure to honor their fathers and mothers in accordance with the Ten Commandments. Now, what did those two have to do with each other? Well, in other words, the leaders criticized Jesus and his disciples for not following some rules that they themselves had created. While Jesus counters that they're not following the instructions or the commandments which God created. So he concluded by saying, you guys are hypocrites. You lay down your own rules while you ignore the rules of God. Hypocrites is someone who, whose words say one thing and their actions show something entirely different. So Jesus' teaching in the first part of today's gospel builds on the debates with the Pharisees and the scribes, the traditions that have grown up around God's law or the Ten Commandments have become a burden on the people, which God never intended to happen. Instead of finding ways to ease the people's burdens, the leaders double down on the rules and the regulations you must obey. They even went so far as to walk 80 miles, probably taking about six days to confront Jesus about disciples not washing their hands according to man-made rituals. Come on. Presumably, the crowd had been listening to this controversy, this debate between Jesus and the Pharisees and the scribes. In today's gospel, Jesus addresses the crowd directly, starting at verse 10, and then he shifts the attention directly to the disciples at verse 12 and following. And in, a, in doing so, Jesus uh, appears either to diminish or to set aside the Torah food regulations, and the Torah being the first five books of the Bible, or sometimes called the Law of Moses. The question at issue is, what constitutes true holiness? Pharisees and scribes think of holiness as a faithful observance of the law, and the man-made rules and regulations, of course. We are so familiar with Jesus' conflict with scribes and Pharisees that we might find it difficult to appreciate their perspective. Dietary laws were an important part of the Jewish religious observance. Probably still are, I shouldn't say were. They are at the heart of the Torah, the holiest part of the Jewish scripture and dietary laws help to create the sense of being a separate people, which is so important to Jewish identity. They are God's chosen and God's chosen keep the dietary laws and those laws help to establish their identity as God's chosen. So the law declared certain foods unclean and eating those foods would defile the one who ate them. A lot of this had nothing to do with hygiene and health. Some did, but most not. Most had to do just simply with holiness, obedience to the will of God. God had specified what was and was not allowed to be eaten or done. Failure to observe these laws constituted a rebellion against God or disobedience. The Pharisees and the scribes are trying to ensure that all of the people observe the commandments that come from God, that everyone <laughs> obey God's will. Well, let me tell you, trying to guarantee that everyone is going to obey God's will 
is an impossible and a thankless job. In challenging Jewish dietary observance, Jesus now redirects the focus from that which enters the mouth, food, to that which comes from the heart, thoughts and feelings and motives. Given the long-standing emphasis on dietary laws, Jesus' statement here is really very radical. First, it appeared to contradict God-given laws laid down in the book of Leviticus, not just the human traditions, which the Jews find in things called the Mishnah and the Talmud. Second, Jesus is establishing that his interpretation of the scriptures are the rules for his disciples. In today's world, Jesus might compare this to people who make a great effort to shower and use deodorant and uh, maybe put on some cologne or some perfume, uh, you know, perfecting their hair, you know, because I got a lot of that, um, putting on their best outfits, brushing their teeth, at the same time make, making very little effort to make sure that their thoughts and their feelings and their motives are all in keeping with God's will. The disciples asked Jesus if he knows that the Pharisees were offended by what he said. <laughs> it should not surprise anyone that the Pharisees and the scribes are offended, much less Jesus. These Pharisees have devoted their entire lives, both personally and professionally, to religious purity, following the rules. Their credentials are hard-earned, and they are impressive. Not only do they believe and observe the Torah and the Mishnah, but they make every effort to make sure everyone else is observing these things too. They have, in effect, become religious police. At least, that is how they appear from the outside. People today who perceive themselves as pillars of the Christian community might also be offended if they're questioned about how they view their own piety when comparing themselves to others, or being questioned about their motives when they make a sizable contribution letting everyone know what they did, or making a grand gesture and doing some good deed while everyone pays attention to the good deed, or questioned about some negative thing they supposedly said about another member of the church. Good and evil, Jesus says, comes from the heart, the place of obedience to the will of God. The corruption in our hearts finds expression in the words of our mouth, and the words of our mouth lead to the deeds of our hands. Anger in our heart gives rise to hurtful words, violent deeds. It had been a popular notion in recent years that ventilating your anger causes it to evaporate. More recently, we have come to understand that angry, hateful words simply fuel more anger in other people, maybe even in yourself. Hateful words damage everyone. The person who says them, the person to whom they are directed, and anyone who might happen to overhear the hateful exchange. And if you doubt that's true, just follow the thread of someone who posts something inflammatory on one of the social media platforms. Or if you don't do social media, just pay attention the next time someone wants to gossip with you about someone else and see if it comes across as positive toward the other person or negative toward the other person. And then afterward, take a moment and check in with your own feelings and see how did that experience affect you? Jesus explains to the disciples that 
Food simply passes through the body. It goes from the mouth to the stomach to the sewer. Feelings, thoughts, motivations, they hang around. They can pollute the heart and bring about evil intentions, like it says in the gospel, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander, and so on. And if that specific list sounds a little bit familiar to you, then congratulations. Matthew is alluding to the 6th through the 10th of the Ten Commandments. The commandments that focus on the relationships between people. Food that goes into the body cannot destroy the body because it passes through. Although the corruption that causes people to sin exists already within the body and it destroys the body from within. By focusing on what comes from the heart rather than outward religious practices. Jesus makes religious observance both easier and more difficult. It's easier because it disentangles us from the complexity of rules and regulations, giving us a broad guidelines, actually, instead of these detailed directions on how we have to function each day of our lives, each minute of each day. And it becomes more difficult because now we have to let our devotion to God affect us in the innermost part of our being. We can no longer simply perform a ritual or a religious practice and consider that our religious observation has been satisfied, like going to church on Sunday and then not being godly the rest of the week. We have to make a genuine effort to establish loving relationships. First with God, love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and being, and love your neighbor as yourself. Thank you once again for joining me for today and for this week as we have continued our journey through these mini Bible studies. Now this week preparing for the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, August the 16th, 2020. Have a great day and God bless.